So from my point of view, this software is feature complete for my uses. Um, if other people want to actually fork the code and, and up, update it for additional features, then, then they should do that in GitHub. Um, I'll go through the, the actual features of this um, right now, just for each of the features of the software. Uh, so first of all, it connects automatically and it gives you the information about the Elm device you're using. Uh, there's a, a connect button uh, where you can click that to reconnect if you need to reconnect for, for any reason. It maybe if you're connecting to a different vehicle. Um, then I've added a configuration option where you can set things like the font. So if you select a different font, say this one, and then hit the config button and you'll see the font changes. Uh, so I just go back and set it back to my preferred font. Uh, and you can also set the serial port, so it'll give you a list of the serial ports it sees. Um, or you can select the vehicle, so if you've got trouble codes for other vehicles, then you can put them in text files in the same format as the ones that you see there. Uh, and you can then select between the different vehicles, uh, because in the manufacturer's codes, different vehicles will, uh, from different manufacturers will use the same PID codes, so you can only really select one at a time, but this gives you the option to switch between them if you need to. Um, uh, and then if I go uh, along onto the vehicle, if, um, vehicle icon, so it gives you information about uh, the actual vehicle, so it just r brings back the PIDs for the, the vehicle, which are informative about the vehicle, uh, and it displays them. Then the next icon along is the trouble codes, so it will show the trouble codes. It tells you the stored trouble codes and the pending trouble codes. Uh, and the stored trouble codes, you can have freeze frame data for those, which I'll come across in in, um, in the icon, a couple of uh, icons along from here. Um, so the next one is plot data. So you can plot up to three data points. Uh, so it starts plotting from the left of the display across, uh, and I can actually adjust one of these on my rig and you should see yeah you see the the value changing as I adjust the um the pot on, on my rig just to do some testing. Uh, but you can go in uh, so that there's the one, two and three icons at the top and you can if you click on one of them then it gives you the options to change uh, what you're plotting. So I could plot say vehicle speed. And, and it will automatically change that and you see it, the blue line drop all the way down to the bottom uh, because the data has now changed the vehicle speed it changes the uh, scale on the right hand axis as well uh, and it, the recycle button means you can start the plotting from the beginning again so if I hit that and then it starts to clears the data that I had and starts um, plotting from the left hand side of the screen again uh, and if I just change this uh, first one back to engine coolant temperature I think it was Uh, so then that goes back then you see the blue line shoot up again and uh, i can start messing around on my rig again then to see, to actually vary the engine coolant temperature uh, it doesn't plot particularly fast yeah um with obd it the, the speed at which it gets the data back isn't brilliant because it's low priority on the CAN bus. it could plot this a bit faster if i change the source code a bit uh but that i might do that in the future i might not um it's not 100 percent important to me because uh, Actually, if you want to log data, then it's best to do it straight from the canvas, and we, I might work on, on doing that at some point. So if I go to the next icon, the freeze frame data, so this is to do with the um, the trouble codes. Uh, and if you look at the the number uh, 020200, well, that third double digit 00 is the uh, trouble code number. So for the first trouble code, which it identifies as P1692, so if I went back to the trouble codes, um, the stored trouble codes, you'd see P1692 is the first stored trouble code. Where if there are other stored trouble codes, then it, you'd have numbers 01 and you get a list of the stored data for those and uh, and it would give you uh, for this this record here uh, for at the top of each set of stored, uh, at, at the top of each freeze frame. And then it gives you all the values which are stored on that freeze frame. Uh, and then the next icon across is the actual frame of data. So this brings back all of the information uh, that your ECU supports uh, as values. And you can look through e each value and uh, decide how you feel about it. And then there's a reload button on the, on the right hand side and you can just click that and get a, get the, 
the frame of uh, from the ECU again to get the up-to-date values and then the next icon along is the meters so you can configure meters and uh, you can put whatever ones you want on here uh, whilst so if you look at the top left corner there's a, a lock icon so if I unlock that then the meters become sort of editable so you can add a button add a add, add a meter say and I think then the middle button is a, a drag icon so you can move it around uh, and then you can select the type of meter that you want with this config button into several different types of uh, meter and then the button on the right you can select the what you actually want it to plot so if I select engine RPM for that one and I can change the meter again to, to different types and then uh, you can also close the meter so the X on the top right uh, you can close that and I just have this like standard layout this is in the, in the config which I'll check in the source code uh, depending on the display resolution it may, may display slightly different but you can you can erase the config files and, and it will like, just start off with a blank screen and you can start from 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 fresh if you want and as soon as you lock that it starts reading the data for for that again it's not a particularly fast update because the Elm um, protocol is, is fairly slow but it, it's uh, is updated so if I, I change um, the which one was it I think it's the manifold pressure or is it the oh it, it's the engine coolant temperature which I'm changing you see it like updates but it's not it's not very uh, quick and it's updating but it's a it's a way of you know over time like monitoring it uh, so I'll go back to the so if I click on the mill light I go, it goes back to the trouble code um, page and you can view all the trouble codes oh yeah and there's, there's the reset trouble codes button which is just below the power button uh, and you can either select cross not to reset them or tick to reset them uh, and it re reloads them back in and because I've got nothing connected to this ECU just it's just on my bench so all the trouble codes come back again and then there's the reload button so you can see them so that they're, they're starting to come back I think it goes up to about seven trouble codes for this the last the last couple of features are the printer and the PDF so the printer prints out a copy of uh, the reports and the PDF button will generate a, a, a copy of the report. So you see, there's like a little timer icon next to the power button. It just that just says it's busy. It's collecting the information to put into the PDF file. It will then put it into the PDF file, and it tells you then where it saved it. So it saved it on the save directory, and then it give, gives you the name. So it gives you the date and time, and then the vehicle uh, VIN number. Uh, as because um, I'm going to use this on touch screen, so rather than entering it, I've given it like a standard file name. Uh, so if I generate another port, it'll it'll be different because it'll be on a different time. Uh, so you can generate those as, as much as you want. I'll go into that directory and, and actually view that PDF report that I've just generated. Uh, and yeah, if I click on the printer button, it basically does the same thing. It, it generates a PDF file, which it then tries to send to the printer. But I don't have uh, the printer, the LP, um, LPR, I think it is the source, uh, the, the utility to print. So yeah, it's telling me it doesn't, can't find the LPR command when I try and do that. Uh, so I haven't tested that uh, with the actual printing, but that should should work. Um, so if I click on the power button and come out of the software, I can now look at the directories uh, which I've which I've got. So I've rearranged the source code. I've separated out the the icons into um, an icons directory, uh, and then I've got data in the data directory. So if I look in the data directory, this is like the static data. The text, the text files, uh, which I've, which used to be in amongst this root directory, which I've now moved out of the way, and then there's a config directory, and that's where all the configs are, and you can delete those config files and you start off with a like a clean session, or you can just uh, leave leave the um the default ones in there, uh, and if you go through the config anyway, so it up, it'll update those. So the meters, when you change the meters, it'll automatically when you come out of the application it will save them and also the the um the data for doing the plots it will save those automatically so that so you get keep that consistent between uh when you actually use the user software and the config is to do with the fonts and stuff and it will save that between between uses and then it puts the pdf files in this save directory uh, and then um there's a, a utility called events which is a pdf reader so if i if I now display one of the PDF files, 
I'll show you uh, what's in inside it. So this should should open up, uh, and I can show you. So I've separated stuff out onto different pages in here. So first page you get vehicle information. Uh, then if I go page down, uh, then it shows it logs the trouble code information, uh, and then on the next page, freeze frame data for the trouble codes. And then the next page, the actual uh, frame data, and this is all these are this is all in text, so you can copy and paste stuff out of this out of the reports, or you can uh, manually send it to print or email it to people. Uh, and then I think yeah, the last page is I put the Elm device information because it's not really important usually, but it's nice to have a, a reference as to what Elm device used uh, was used when it generated the report and the version of the Elm device and things like that. Uh, so that's that's the report. Uh, and you can generate those um, just by clicking on the, on the PDF button. Uh, and then just an up, update about uh, what, what's been so changed in the actual software. So actually most of the source code has been changed and updated and refined. Uh, and then I've just added one class, which is this uh, PDF class up at the top right uh, to generate PDF reports. So that's the only class I've added in this, this update. But I'll, I'll check all this source code into GitHub uh, so the latest source code's in there. Uh, in future, I can't see many updates uh, to, to this. There's a, a drag scroll a feature which I want to add, uh, which will help sort of viewing large amounts of data on, on the display. Uh, but apart from that, maybe add a few PID codes um, if I need to add any PID codes in, in the work that I'm doing. Um, but other than that, people are free to sort of um, take branch of the code and uh, and do their own updates and I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you if you do take a branch of the code take a branch of the code off of this off of this actual repository then if people need to use your updates then they can get to it nice and easily through through finding my repository then finding the fact that you've branched it and, and made it better